From the creators of the Blair Witch Project comes the series premiere of Freaky Links tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, after the season premiere of Police Videos. Freaky Links tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 8 Central, here on Fox. Robin Ventura trying to bunt his way aboard, and it rolls foul. Well, for those of you just joining us, it's the top half of the eighth inning. And all the scoring in this game took place in the second. With two away and the bases loaded. Timoniel Perez, a two-run single in the center field off Giants starter Sean Estes. Estes had to leave the game in the third after badly injuring his ankle running the bases. Jeff Kent started the second against Leiter with a blue single, stole second. And the Giants' only run scored on a double by Ellis Burks. The Mets trying to even this series in one game apiece before heading back to Shea Stadium for game three on Saturday. Breaking ball from Reeder is outside. And activity for the first time tonight in the New York Mets bullpen. The right-hander, a starter throughout the regular season, Bobby Jones beginning to get loose. Outside and low, three and one now on Ventura. As you mentioned, Jones, a starter throughout the regular season, did not have an appearance out of the bullpen all year long. Three and two now on Ventura. Pulled foul. It'll stay three balls, two strikes. Ventura followed in the inning by Benny Yagbayani and then Jay Payton. Two runs, six hits, no errors, eight men left on base for the Mets. The Giants, one run, only three hits against Al Leiter. No errors, and they've stranded only four. High fly ball into right field. Burks is there, one away. We remind you, as always, this copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of Major League Baseball. Now Dusty Baker making his way out of the giant dugout. He has a right-hander, Doug Henry, who's been up for quite some time, ready in the bullpen. And the left-hander, Alan Embry, has just gotten up to join him. Terrific job by Reeder out of the San Francisco bullpen in emergency duty here tonight. And he'll get a warm round of applause from the crowd in San Francisco. Mets lead 2-1, batting in the eighth inning for over 13 years. The MetLife blimps have been providing aerial television coverage of sporting and special events. Tonight, Snoopy 2 brings you the aerial shots of the Mets and Giants. Look to the skies as the MetLife blimps visit a town near you. Tom Brenneman, Bob Brenly, our entire Fox crew on hand here in San Francisco. And now Dusty Baker goes to his bullpen and summons a right-hander, Doug Henry. Now this guy just continues to show up in the postseason every year in 97 as a member of this Giants pitching staff in 98 and 99 as a member of the Astros staff in the division series a 1.23 ERA in division series play. He gets ahead of Benny Agbayani 0 and 1. See his numbers on the season you may remember I mentioned earlier that the only significant injuries that the Giants suffered this year were to Joe Nathan and John Johnstone a couple of pitchers one a starter one a reliever the loss of Johnstone was eased somewhat by the fact the Giants were able to go out on July 30th and acquire Doug Henry reacquire Doug Henry from the Houston Astros and he's really taken up a lot of the slack that John Johnstone filled last year like Bayani, one of two is walked single and pass to second and a slider is on the outside corner it's 0 2. One ball, two strikes. Jay Payton waits in the on-deck circle. Well, outstanding you, work by Reeder. Yeah, you said it. Just an outstanding job on short notice. Kirk Reeder probably came to the ballpark today anticipating sitting on the bench, eating some sunflower seeds, and watching a big league ball game. 
ends up throwing four and a third innings, a very solid relief. Henry tried the slider again, too low to Agbayani. Two balls, two strikes. The break-even pitch. And it's fouled back out of play. And Agbayani upset with himself there. Henry left the pitch out over the plate. It hung up there a bit, and he just missed it. That appeared to be one of those anti-sliders. Had slider rotation, but the ball just stayed up over the heart of the plate. A good pitch to hit for Agbayani just underneath it. Take one more look at that pitch from Doug Henry. That's indeed slider spin. You can see that tight rotation. The pitch was up above the belt. Got away with one right there. Again, the 2 2. Fastball that time. Full count on Benny Agbayani. Saw a lighter trying to stay loose over there on that Mets bench. It's turned into a very chilly evening here in San Francisco. Ball four off the outside corner to Agbayani. So Henry walks the first batter he faces. Well, Doug Henry definitely wanted this pitch, as did Bobby Estelea behind the plate. Well, everybody wanted it, but Benny Agbayani, and home plate umpire Gary Cedarstrom, chooses to send him on down to first base, and he will now be taken down for a pinch runner. I believe that's Joe McEwing coming into the ball game to pinch run. Super Joe, they called him in St. Louis, coming up with the Cardinals. And it's done a nice job this season for these New York Mets. So he will run for Benny Agbayani. Agbayani able to reach base three times in the game here tonight. Terrible. McEwing three for four in stolen base attempts on the season. Does not have blazing speed over there at first base. He's a very good base runner, but at this stage, not a great base stealer. Jay Payton, 0 for 3, is scored a run. That one picked out of the dirt by Jeff Kent playing first base here tonight. We mentioned earlier only the 11th for the 12th time actually this season he's made 11 starts before tonight over at first that ball bounced in the dirt over there to Jeff Kent at first base now, that may not seem like very much but that same ball is still in play and with a veteran pitcher like Doug Henry on the mound they know what to do when they get a baseball with a scuff on it. Usually a hitter in that particular situation if you see that ball go into the dirt either the hitter or one of the coaches or the manager or somebody from the bench will ask the home plate umpire to throw that ball out of play. One and oh to count on Jay Payton. Ground ball. The glove of Henry, they get one. The ground ball, Bradley, and they get two. The Giants bat in the bottom of the eighth inning, trailing the Mets two to one. Series on Fox is brought to you by Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. By IBM, taking e-business and your business to the next level. And by Autotrader.com, the biggest, best used car site on the planet. Like something out of a Dean Coons novel, the fall covers Pac Bell Park from our blimp. But they are rocking on the inside as the Giants come to bat in the bottom of the eighth inning. They trail the Mets two to one. And Al Leiter still out there for the Mets. Joe McEwing remains in the game, taking over in left field for Benny Agbayani. 
quick scouting report on a pinch hitter. Felipe Crespo, the most used pinch hitter this season by Dusty Baker. 15 hits and 51 at bats, including a home run. Crespo, a switch hitter, much stronger from the left side of the plate. He'll be asked to go to the plate and face Al Leiter, batting from the right side. Two for 12 as a right-handed pinch hitter. Here we go, bottom of the eighth inning. Crespo, then the top of the order, Murray and Miller. And Leiter kicks and fires on the inside corner of strike. Bobby Valentine in the seventh inning had John Franco a left-hander and Bobby Jones a right-hander getting loose in his bullpen. They have taken a seat. This is Leiter's to win or lose here tonight. Broken back, caught in foul ground by Ventura, one away. You know, Tom, they say some guys make it look easy out there on the mound. Well, the hitters may think it looks easy, but what's the faces of Al Leiter? This guy's working hard out there every pitch. He's working hard on the bench, watching the inning. Running out there on the mound. Boy, this is a guy that comes to play when it's his turn to take the ball. One away in a Giants eighth inning, and here's Calvin Murray. He shows bunt, and did he go? They appeal down to first, and no. Says Ed Montague, it's ball one to Murray, who's 0 for 3 in the game. On the ground, pulled foul, one ball and one strike. Murray really battled lighter his last time up in the fifth inning. A 10 pitch at bat before Leiter struck him out. Check swing, fouled out of play, and Leiter in front of Murray in one and two. All the scoring took place back in the second inning. Tim O'Neill Perez, a two run single with two outs and the bases loaded. Giving New York a 2-0 lead. And then Burks an RBI double to score Kent, making it 2-1. 2-2 two two now on Calvin Murray. The Giants have not had a hit since the third inning. And that was an infield hit on that play at second base when Sean Estes was injured. It was ruled an infield single for Miller. Felix Rodriguez warming up in the Giants bullpen. He has been the main right-handed setup man for Rob Nen all season long for the Giants. Rodriguez struck out Daryl Hamilton with the bases loaded, ending the eighth inning in game one. Three and two now on Calvin Murray. Three balls, two strikes. Wind in the left center field, a base hit. And the Giants have their first hit since the third. And the tying run aboard here in the bottom of the eighth. The Giants right-handed hitter is finally able to keep a ball fair to left field. Cutter that just stayed out over the heart of the plate. I'm sure he wanted that pitch in a little bit further, but Cal Murray able to get the head of the battle of the ball, line it into left field. The Giants' right-handed hitters have not hit a ball to the right side of second base in this game. Armando Benitez, the Mets' closer, now gets up. Benitez, like Nen, has had a spectacular year. The best closers in Major League Baseball this season play for the two teams that are squaring off here tonight. And people can argue all they want. The stats simply don't lie. Nen and Benitez, the two best closers in the game this season. Bill Miller, the batter. And he takes a strike on the outside corner.
once again the Mets using that very odd defensive alignment when they have a left-handed pitcher on the mound as they do tonight with Al Leiter. Todd Zeal the first baseman positions himself well off the bag right in front of the runner. A designated signal lets Todd Zeal know when Al Leiter is going to throw the pickoff move over there to first base. When he is not throwing to first, Zeal will occasionally bluff back toward the bag, trying to decoy that runner into going back toward first base as the ball is delivered to home plate. And it will over, sending Murray back to the bag. Leiter up to the 119 pitch mark in this ballgame. Only the fifth inning when he really labored, but other than that, he has been in total command of this game. On the ground, could be two. Boarding for one, throw to Thurston. That's a double play. Leiter applauds his defense behind him. He's gone through eight and has a one-run lead. inning at Pac Bell Park in San Francisco. The Mets trying to even this series in one game apiece after getting beat by Levon Hernandez yesterday in a series opener. And now to pitch tonight for the Giants. Right hander Felix Rodriguez. One time Dodger catcher farmhand, one time Arizona Diamondbacks closer. Now the main right handed setup guy for Rob Nen here with the Giants has had an outstanding season for Dusty Baker. Al Leiter do up second in the inning. They have Benitez warming up in the bullpen as Mike Bordick takes high ball one. Bordick has been aboard twice. His walk scored, bounced to second and single. That one nowhere close. And Dusty Baker not going to take any chances. If Rodriguez is showing out on the mound that he just doesn't have it tonight and every pitcher has those kind of nights he has Rob Nen getting ready in the bullpen. Two and one. Rodriguez consistently in the mid to upper 90s with his fastball took a lot off <laughs> 93 on that called strike right there on the two and oh count very free and easy motion by. Felix Rodriguez the ball just seems to explode out of his hand. He'll be up high if he's too wound up for this game. Swing and a miss on the 96 mile per hour fastball and it's two and two. What a huge out Rodriguez got yesterday in the eighth inning striking out Daryl Hamilton with the bases loaded. Two two pitch strike three called on the outside corner that one at ninety seven. Well, just look at the free and easy motion by Felix Rodriguez very slow and then the explosion in the arm speed to deliver that ball in the high nineties right on the outside corner to Mike Bordick that's nearly an unhittable pitch right there. Al Leiter is going to bat. Here in the top half of the ninth inning, Armando Benitez has taken a seat in that New York bullpen. Well, Barry Bonds is the leadoff hitter in the bottom half of the ninth inning for the Giants. We perhaps could see Al Leiter go back out to take the mound for the bottom half of the inning, retire Bonds or pitch to Bonds, and then turn the ball over to Armando Benitez to face the rest of this right-handed heavy Giants lineup. Oh, and two to Leiter. Either that or he thinks Al Leiter's going to get a hit. Uh, no, that's not it. <laughs> I don't think that's it. Pretty good cut right there on a pitch out over the plate. Leiter behind it, 0 oh and 2.
We mentioned Bobby Valentine has taken the New York Mets to the postseason in consecutive years. The first time that has ever happened in New York Mets franchise history. He's compiled a winning percentage of 565 in his first full seasons as the Mets manager. Yet, like Dusty Baker, neither has a contract for next year. One ball and two strikes. Valentine managed the Texas Rangers from 85 and through 92, took over for Dallas Green for the final 31 games of that 96 season, and Leiter gone on strikes. Two batters, two strikeouts for Felix Rodriguez. Well, the biggest hit in the ball game came back in the second inning. Timo Perez on a breaking ball from Sean Estes went right back up the middle of the field to drive home Jay Payton and Mike Borden. I mentioned it at the time, and I mentioned it later. A tremendous adjustment by a very young hitter. Had his knees buckled on that same pitch to lead off the ball game, came back up and looked for it his second at bat. He got it, and he did not miss it. Bobby Valentine was asked a question before the game after the lineup card was posted, why Perez and not Bubba Trammell? He said, hey, look, this kid has played a lot more outfield in his career than has Trammell. We like his speed, and we like the things he's capable of doing in the outfield especially. Anything we get from him at the plate is a bonus, and it is a bonus bonanza so far here tonight. Two and one. If you're looking ahead of the giant ninth inning, as Bob mentioned, the heart of the order, the three best hitters in the lineup Barry Bonds, Jeff Kent, and Ellis Burks. Foul out of play, count even. clamps on this high octane Giants offense tonight. Still two and two. You mentioned Perez got the nod tonight, as you mentioned, because Bobby Valentine felt he had played more outfield than anybody he had available. Also, in his two at bats in the ball game last night, Bobby said this kid didn't look intimidated. He didn't look scared. He had two very good at bats, even though he went hitless. Hanging in there tough here against a tough right hander. Trying to keep it alive for Edgardo Alfonso. Lighter in the Mets with a one run lead in the ninth inning. This kid's fun to watch. <laughs> I mean, he's up there hacking. Ain't no fooling around here tonight. Timo getting his chance and. He's had a big ball game. Well, you come into a series anticipating that certain star quality players are going to be the showcase, but as we've seen from postseasons past, you never know who the hero is going to be. Melvin Mora, big postseason star last year for the Mets. Fly 
lined into left field, and Perez has his third hit of the night. His first postseason start. Three hits and five at bats, and has knocked in both Mets runs in the game. Alfonso's had a rough night at the plate for the Mets. 0 for 4. We may see Perez on the move over there at first base. Felix Rodriguez on the mound has surrendered seven stolen bases in 10 attempts on the season. He does use a slide step to the plate on occasion. Other times he'll use the high leg kick. Should Perez pitch the right pitch to run on, he should be able to steal a bag right here. With a one run lead, the Mets may gamble a little bit right now. Had Alfonso been swinging the bat better, I feel they'd go ahead and let him take his at bat right here. Alfonso has bounced to third, struck out, fly to right. He did hit the ball very, very hard his last time up in the seventh inning against Reeder. That was a drive that sent Calvin Murray back to the wall in right center field to corral it. Remember, it was the ninth inning last year where Edgardo Alfonso in the division series hit that grand slam off Arizona's Bobby Chouinard. The Mets beating Randy Johnson in game one of that series and went on to win in four games. And Rodriguez paying a lot of attention to Perez at first base. He's getting a pretty big lead over there at first. The uh, first couple of deliveries, or rather the first couple of pickoff attempts, he had a relatively short lead, and they were close plays at first, but he's gotten an extra half a step after seeing Rodriguez's move a couple of times. Rodriguez very close to balking right there. It didn't appear from here as though he came to a complete stop in that, the stretch position. That's what speed on the bases will do. It will change the... The way the defense has to make plays, it will change the pitches that a catcher calls. It will change the way a pitcher delivers the ball to home plate. Just the threat of the stolen base by Perez. Two and zero oh on Edgardo Alfonso, and he smokes one in a deep left center field, and Edgardo. Talk about Alfonso in the ninth inning of game one last year in Arizona, and he delivers a huge two-out, two-run blast in the ninth inning of game two to give the Mets a three-run lead. You mentioned the ball that he hit hard. Deep to center field in his last at bat. This time gets a pitch a little over the heart of the plate, down low where he likes it, got full extension, good carry on this ball. You know, Tommy, I think this fog has cut down on a lot of the wind here at the ballpark. That's a pitch that normally would have stayed in the ballpark. Now, Leiter, you know he'll have a reaction to it. And the Giants outfielders were talking early in the season here at this ballpark that balls hit the left field that are above the wind pillow, if you will. That breeze that blows across from right to left, if they hit it above that pillow, it seems to continue to carry further and further. That ball just seemed to defy gravity as he went out there into left center field. Alfonso taking a bow indeed a two run blast here in the Mets ninth inning and now lighter with a three run cushion rather than the two one lead here's Piazza and he fouls it away a ball a strike Piazza two for three in the game has been on base three times. Foul Alfonso we mentioned a native Venezuelan over the last two seasons is hit 52 home runs and knocked in 202 he was an all-star for the first time this year 
And there are many more of those to come. He just quietly went about his business this season, doing what he does so well, getting on base ahead of Mike Piazza and other RBI guys in the lower part of that order, and driving in whatever runs were available when he had an opportunity. 130, or rather 94 RBIs on the season for the Mets second baseman. Two and two on Piazza. Rounded foul. It's amazing how perceptions can change and then become reality. Bobby Valentine going into this game, changing around his lineup. He had Benny Adbayani leading off against the left-hander, or the right-hander Hernandez, pardon me, in game one. Jay Payton batting second. He completely moves around the lineup here tonight. Puts in Perez, who has three hits, has scored a run, knocked in two. Alfonso moved to the number two hole. And in the ninth, a two-run home run. Piazza pops it up behind the plate. And Estalea able to battle the wind and make the catch. So now Leiter takes a ball in the bottom of the ninth inning. Thanks to the two-run home run by Alfonso, it's 4-1 Mets. More great postseason baseball on Fox if necessary. Game four, the Mariners and the White Sox from Seattle. Or game three, the Giants and the Mets from Shea. The road to the World Series on Fox continues Saturday, 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. Giants come to bat last half of the ninth inning. Trailing Al Leiter in the Mets, 4-1. It'll be Bonds, Kent, and Burks to face a New York Southpaw who has turned in a big-time performance for his team here tonight. And we said it at the top of the show, Al Leiter is the best big-game pitcher in this Mets rotation, and he certainly has stepped up in the ballgame tonight. Barry Bonds 0 for 3. And he takes outside ball one. As you predicted, lighter to face Bonds. Even with a three run lead, Bobby Valentine has his closer, Armando Benitez, ready in the bullpen. Right handed batters Kent and Burks to follow Bonds, who rips one into right center field. It'll go to the wall. Bonds on his way to second with a stand up double to begin the San Francisco night. Ryder's done a good job of not giving Barry Bonds anything on the inside part of the plate to handle, so Bonds reaches out over the plate and hooks this ball back into the gap in right center field. That was a pitch that normally you'd see a guy hit to the opposite field, but Bonds was looking out over the plate where Leiter had been working him all night long, was able to get the head of the bat on the ball and find the gap. Dave Wallace, a pitching coach, signals for Benitez in the bullpen. So he'll come on to face Kent, Burks, and Martinez. The Giants batting in the bottom of the ninth, down three. We'll be back after this. Leiter, an outstanding performance for the Mets in the ball game tonight. Works into the ninth inning, gave up only the five base hits, stick, six strikeouts, three walks, made the big pitches when he had to in this ball game. Now he'll give way to the hard throwing right hander, the closer of the Mets, who saved 41 games this season, Armando Benitez. And he delivers strike one to Jeff Kent. Well, the numbers on Benitez are staggering. He's held right-handed batters to a 160 average on the season. Lefties have hit only 134 against the Mets closer. Kent, one of two in his career against Benitez. The hit was a home run. Check swing, and he went around, and Benitez quickly ahead of Kent at 0-2. Intimidating out there on the mound. He goes 6'4, 240 pounds. No question that our 
Armando Benitez is the close horse. His 41 saves are a franchise record. Tied for third in the National League, fifth in the major leagues, averaging over 12 and a half strikeouts per nine innings. One and two to Kent. And a ground ball in the hole. Falling down is Bordick. The throw is not in time. Another player in this ball game to stumble around in an effort to make a defensive play. Hard one hopper hit to his right. He gets to the ball in good shape, but somehow lost his footing before he got to the ball. By the time he gets up and makes the throw across the infield, Kent's in safely with that head first slide at first base. Bordick's momentum just carried him down to the ground. By the time he recovers, Kent is safe at first. Here comes Ellis Burks representing the tying run in the bottom of the ninth inning. a fly ball in a short right. Perez waiting and he's got it. A huge out for Armando Benitez. One away in the bottom of the ninth inning. Al Leiter trying to get his first postseason win since pitching for Toronto in the World Series against Philadelphia in 1993. And with the right-hander Benitez now on the mound, Dusty Baker will go to his bench. He's got three left-handed pitch hitters available, Armando Rios, Marvin Bernard, and the man he has selected, J.T. Snow, a 284 hitter on the season, 19 homers, 96 RBIs. He is 0 for 2 lifetime against Armando Benitez with two strikeouts. Snow digs in. Representing a tying run. And it's ball one away. Bonds dancing around out there at second base. He nearly lost his footing. And Benitez turned around and looked at him. He'd have picked him off. from behind wins this season for Dusty Baker's Giants. Can they rally in the ninth inning tonight? Now you mentioned with Bonds dancing around off the bag at second base. That time Benitez went to that inside move back to second just to make sure Bonds had no thoughts about attempting to steal third base. And J.T. Snow did the proper thing for a hitter in that situation. He immediately called timeout at the plate. How big is that home run in the top of the ninth inning by Edgardo Alfonso now? Two and oh on J.T. Snow. Dusty Baker's Giants trying to rally and take a two games to none lead in this best of five division series. The New York Mets, they have to win this game to even this series in a game apiece. On the inside corner, it's two and one to Snow. Only once in division series history has a team fallen behind two games to none and rallied to win the series. The 1995 Seattle Mariners beating the New York Yankees three straight at the kingdom.
fastball down the heart of the plate. J.T. Snow has played in this ballpark all summer. He knows that balls hit down the right field line don't hook. Look at him pointing into fair territory. The only question was, did he get enough to get it up onto the landing? Yes, indeed, he did. The unbelievable has happened here in San Francisco. A pinch hit three-run home run by J.T. Snow, and it's a four. Today is J.T. Snow's day. That is his first pinch hit home run in his major league career. Swing and a miss by Aurelia. Now granted, Snow generally an everyday player. He hasn't had a lot of pinch hit appearances. 22 to be exact. That at bat number 23. And Cash is in to tie it here in the ninth inning. And Al Leiter. Extremely disappointed, as you can well imagine, in that New York Mets dugout. 0 oh, and 2 now on Aurelia. Thirty-eight come from behind victories this season for the San Francisco Giants. It's a trademark of a Dusty Baker managed ball club. They never feel they're out of a game. Ball outside, one ball and two strikes. The inning started with a double to right center field against Leiter off the bat of Barry Bonds. Armando Benitez came in. Kent with an infield single to the hole at short. A play which Mike Bordick fell down. On the ground, to Bordick will keep his foot in this time and throws out Aurelia for the second out of the inning. Bobby SLA, you could see him clearly waiting around there to see if Dusty Baker was going to pinch hit for him. He does have two left-handed hitters available, Armando Rios, Marvin Bernard. Dusty took a look around, took a look at his lineup card, pointed to Bobby SLA and said, get up there and do something. Two down, bottom of the ninth of a 4-4 affair. And a fast ball at the knees is a strike. Unbelievable ninth inning here at Pac Bell Park. It's 0 and 2. Edgardo Alfonso, with two outs and one on in the top of the ninth inning, hit a two run home run of the seats in left center field, giving Al Leiter a 4 1 lead. But the never say die Giants under Dusty Baker get two hits and a pinch hit three run home run by Snow. That one popped up into shallow left field. Bordick, the shortstop, the call, the catch, and we go to the 10th inning. J.T. Snow, the first pinch hit home run of his major league career. Two runs on a home run off the bat of Edgardo Alfonso in the top of the night. But with two on and one out in the bottom of the night, J.T. Snow ties the game with a three-run home run just fair down the right field line. So on we go to the 10th. Felix Rodriguez on the mound, and he faces Todd Zeal, ball one low and away. In extra inning games this season, the Mets were 10 and 8. The Giants were 7 and 5. Snow remains in the game to play first base. Kent moves to his regular position at second. Zeal. Oh, 
Ground ball, right side, Kemp. Rays out of field. Let's go downstairs to Josh Lewis. Guys bumped into J.T. Snow in the clubhouse tunnel in the fourth inning when Sean Estes was out. And he had his typical California casualness about him. He said, Woody's going to hold him, Woody being Kirk Reeder, and we'll get him. Well, Woody went four and a third innings of shutout ball, and who was it that got it? It was J.T. Snow. Terrific stuff, Josh Lewin. Thank you very much. Nice to have Josh with us here in the postseason on Fox. And what a game tonight in San Francisco. The best lead plans of Bobby Valentine. You couldn't ask for a better situation. One on, granted nobody out, but three straight right-handed batters coming up, or so it appeared, until Snow came up as a pinch hitter. And Benitez serves up the game-tying three-run homer. Ventura down a strike, but these are the kinds of games the New York Mets, with their grit and determination over the last two seasons, have still found a way to win. Well, both these ball clubs have that similar trait, finding ways to win, having a different hero every night. You know, the addition of J.T. Snow into this ballgame obviously played an immediate dividend with that three-run home run, but also the Giants now have their best defensive team on the field. And that was the best defensive team in the National League this season. Ventura fly ball down the left field line. Bonds a long run. He's got it in foul ground. You talk about home field advantage. Barry Bonds playing here in his home ballpark, coming after this ball, takes a quick peek, ran around the bullpen mound to make that catch just in front of that mound, up onto the tarp. That's why he's got a mantle full of gold gloves at home. He actually veered to his left and then back to his right to avoid that bullpen mound down the left field line. Daryl Hamilton, the former Giant. Comes on to pinch hit. Rodriguez delivers. It's fouled out of play. Our game produced by Jeff Gallen, directed by Jim Lynch, and we certainly send our best wishes to Alma Lynch watching tonight, and we certainly hope you're doing well. We're crazy about Alma Lynch, and get well soon. count on Daryl Hamilton lined in the right center field it'll fall for a base hit Murray over to cut it off but Hamilton making a turn he's coming to second and he's there with a two out double Giants were shading Hamilton to hit the ball to the opposite field you mentioned that Rodriguez blew him away in the ball game last night with fastballs this time he gets a pitch up Finds a gap in right center. Calvin Murray closed ground quickly, but Hamilton with too much speed, no chance to get him at second base. We talked about the Mets. Don't forget, this team won 94 games during the regular season. They've suffered their fair share of tough moments. But here they are with a go ahead run in scoring position and two away in the 10th inning. And now has to lay it a visit Rodriguez. And Dave Rigetti is going to join in as well. Those are the numbers we mentioned a moment ago. The two clubs in extra inning games this season. Now this is the first time that the Giants have had a runner at second base with Rodriguez on the mound. And usually when you see the catcher go out to the mound in this situation it's just a reconfirm what the signs are going to be with that runner out there at second base you cannot afford a wild pitch pass ball in this situation of course with Hamilton at second base the Mets now have a runner in scoring position they're one for six in these situations in the ball game tonight Peyton the hitter at the plate 0 for two in these particular situations Four four game in a tenth. Hamilton leads at second base with two away. And the first pitch to Jay Payton. Lined into center field, a base hit. Hamilton being waved around. He will score. 
score on a two-out single by Peyton. And just like that, the Mets have recaptured the lead. It's 5-4. to four. How about the New York Mets rookies in this game tonight? Perez, three hits, two batted in. And now the rookie Peyton with a clutch RBI single. Well, the Giants were playing him to hit the ball in the opposite field, but Peyton hits a line drive right back up the middle of the diamond. Calvin Murray had to move to his left to make the play. Now Leiter still looking on. Disconsolate a moment ago, excited right now. Dusty Baker, another guy not afraid to show his emotions. His are not quite as happy as Al Leiter's at this point. Now Mike Bordick, he looks at a strike. Rodriguez struck him out. The first batter he faced when he came on in the ninth. It's been a rough night for the giant right hander, Felix Rodriguez. One and one to boarding. Daryl Hamilton, a two out pinch hit double to right center, and scores on the two out single to center by Peyton. One and two. Well, Rodriguez is basically a one pitch pitcher and you're seeing the Mets take advantage of that. He's got an at times overpowering fastball as we mentioned in the high 90s. No breaking ball really to speak of. He throws a little wrinkle of a slider. Occasionally he'll throw a two seam fastball but everything is hard hard hard. The Mets are going to the plate looking for something hard. Swing and a miss, and that'll end the inning. But the Mets have taken the lead on a single by Peyton. We're back after this word from your local Fox station. Al Leiter spectacular for eight plus innings tonight, allowed five hits. He took the ball into the bottom of the ninth inning, allowed a leadoff double to Barry Bonds, was taken down for Armando Benitez, who allowed an infield single to Jeff Kent. One out later, a game tying, pinch hit three run home run off the bat of J.T. Snow. But the Mets come right back against Felix Rodriguez and get a two out double by Hamilton. He scores on a single by Peyton, and the Mets have a 5 4 lead. The Giants bat in the bottom of the tenth. Hamilton remains in a game in left field. And Armando Rios will pinch it for Felix Rodriguez. In there a strike. See the career pinch hit numbers for Armando Rios. He was four for 23 this season with one home run and seven RBIs off the bench for Dusty Baker. There's a lot of thunder in this guy's back. And that one taken outside and high. Not the biggest guy in the world, but very strong. Good fastball hitter is Armando Rios. He's taken balls out of here to straightaway center field this season. Ten home runs, 50 RBIs, and only 233 at bats. Swing and a miss. Benitez throwing that fastball right by him, and it's one and two. Just in case Benitez runs into any trouble. Boy, not a bad safety valve. The guy with the second most saves in Major League history loosens in the bullpen. John Franco. Still one and two. And should Franco enter this ballgame, what a contrast in pitching styles. Benitez, a right-handed flamethrower regularly in the high 90s. Franco, a left-handed screwball pitcher. And I don't mean he's a screwball. That's his best pitch. Oh, he is a screwball. I've known him for a long time. <laughs> One and two on Armando Rios. Just off the outside corner. Another fastball at 97 from Benitez. Coaster ride. 
spite of emotions that have taken place over the last two innings here in San Francisco. Both managers, the players, and better than 41,000 in this ballpark. Lined in the right field, a base hit. Perez over to cut it off. And Rios will stop representing the tying run with a leadoff single. Baker had initially sent Marvin Bernard up to lead off this bottom half of the 10th inning. He called him back in favor of Armando Rios, and now we use Bernard to pinch hit for Calvin Murray. Bernard, a much more accomplished bunner than Armando Rios. Had he done it the other way around and Bernard reached base, Rios is not a good bunner at all. Well, here comes Dave Wallace, and we'll see if Bobby Valentine is going to bring on John Franco. And the answer is yes. Franco second only to Lee Smith on the all-time saves list comes on in the 10th. Top half of the ninth inning. One on, two out. Edgardo Alfonso against Felix Rodriguez. His fourth career postseason home run. It gave the Mets a 4-1 lead. J.T. Snow with two on against Armando Benitez, his first career postseason home run. But then Peyton with two outs and a runner at second, put the Mets in front, 5-4 in the 10th. The Giants have Armando Rios aboard in the bottom of the 10th with nobody out. And now on the pitch, the native New Yorker, left-hander John Franco. And on that pickoff attempt at first base, Marvin Bernard's hand started to slide up the barrel of that bat appearing to be bunting in this situation as you get a look at the numbers on Franco this season. Bernard bunts and Franco will play the first. So Bernard gets the job done and that's why they flip flopped as you mentioned a moment ago Dusty Baker having Rios lead off the inning. So if he reached Bernard could advance him with a bunt and that he does. Well, now it's up to the rest of the Giants order to try to figure out John Franco. Not a lot of secrets with John Franco in his career. He very rarely throws strikes. Hitter's overly aggressive against him. He uses that screwball-like changeup, a fastball leading him off the outside corner of the plate. Much like we talked about the Mets attacking Sean Estes and being very patient at the plate, the Giants need to do the same thing against John Franco. Bill Miller settles in. The tying run at second base, one away here in the 10th inning. Outside, ball one. Franco, a graduate of Lafayette High School in Brooklyn. If that high school sounds familiar, a guy named Koufax came out of there. short the runner coming to third and third and throws out Armando Rios boy you have to wonder what in the world Armando Rios is thinking about there representing the tying run with bonds in the on deck circle and he breaks for third a huge mistake uh, this is one of the cardinal sins in baseball as a runner at second you're taught that on a ball Hit to your left, you can safely advance to third base. On a ball hit to your right, you have to hold your ground. Rios with just a terrible base running blunder right here for the Giants. Ball clearly hit to his right. You've got to know where the defender is playing behind you. That ball hit directly at Mike Bordick. Poor, poor choice by Armando Rios. Now Barry Bond. With a tying run at first base. And Franco misses inside for ball one. Barry Bonds tonight, one of four, had a double and scored on a home run by Snow an inning ago. Barry Bonds, a three time most valuable player, a nine time All Star, the player of the decade in the 1990s. And he takes outside and low, two balls and no strikes.
Bonds has never homered in his career in 33 at bats against John Franco. He tried to right there. Well, that tells you how familiar these two guys are with each other. John Franco, a closer, comes in to usually work three outs, the last three outs of the ball game, blows a high fastball by Bonds here. 33 career at bats against John Franco. That tells you these two guys have seen a lot of each other. Bonds wants timeout. One of only eight players in the history of the game to win the most valuable player award three times. He might get a fourth this season. He has struggled in his career in the postseason. And he bats in the tenth inning. The Giants down to their final out. And it's outside three and one. Barry Bonds has only hit one home run in the postseason. That was game six of the 92 National League Championship Series against Tom Glavin. Strike two. Bonds didn't like the call. Well, he may not have liked it, but it looked like a pretty good pitch from John Franco. He was probably surprised to see a fastball over the plate. The runner gets started. Miller at first base with two away on his 3-2 pitch. Franco to Bonds. And it's fouled out of play. Well, you're talking about two guys who have been at the top of their game each for better than 14 years in the major leagues for Franco second all time on the save list his 17th season for Bonds one of the greatest players to ever put on a uniform in this his 14th season again a 3 2 strike three called and the Mets have won it in a thriller in San Francisco 5-4 the final in 10 innings and they go back to New York having even this series in a game apiece what a gutsy effort tonight by the Mets oh, a gutsy effort by both teams but especially by the Mets Barry Bonds unhappy with the 3-1 pitch a fastball down the middle he's even less happy with this one breaking ball that never really took the break appeared to stay off of that inside corner but Gary Cedarstrom the home plate up by a rings up bonds to end this incredibly exciting game John Franco the save Armando Benitez gets the win and the loss goes to Felix Rodriguez and what a night for the youngsters the first career postseason for two rookies Timo Perez with three hits knocked in two, scored a run. And Jay Payton, the game-winning single, driving in Daryl Hamilton in the tenth. Well, we said it earlier in the ball game, Tom, just a couple of innings ago, both of these teams had the ultimate confidence that they could come back from almost any deficit to win a ball game. Tonight, a perfect example, the Giants bouncing back off the mat to tie the ball game. The Mets coming right back to take a lead. This series tied at one game apiece. They'll go to Shea Stadium for game three on Saturday. There's a possibility we could have that game for you right here on Fox, depending on what happens tomorrow in game three between the White Sox and the Seattle Bears. 50-year-old Bobby Valentine celebrates one of the wildest games in division series history. Let's go downstairs to Josh Lewin. All right, guys, thank you very much. Al Leiter, you mentioned grit. Well, there were a lot of predictions of doom back in New York. Now you guys go home with home field advantage. Boy, oh, boy. I, I, I'm not even thinking about that right now, but uh, what a game. And uh, kind of feel for Armando. He's been there all year, and uh, he feels bad about it, but that's the game. And uh, JT hit a good pitch, and uh, just happy right now. Happy we're going back tight. Last 40 minutes, some highs and some lows there, huh? 
It really was. I mean, uh, it doesn't seem like we do it easy, but uh, we won, so hopefully that's a good momentum for game three. Bobby Valentine said before the game, Al, that you had the combination of experience and stuff that he really needed on the mound tonight. Which was it that did it for you tonight, the experience or the stuff? Uh, I think I, my slider was working well on those righties. It seemed like they didn't really adjust right away. I, I sensed they started adjusting a little bit. I had to start throwing curveballs. But I'll tell you what, this place with the music and how loud it was, uh, I could see why they won a lot of games here. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, guys, back to you. Josh, thank you very much. Al Leiter, thank you very much. So now Leiter and the Mets go back to Shea Stadium where they have Along with the Giants, the best home field record in Major League Baseball. Game three is Saturday. What a game tonight in San Francisco. For Bob Brindley and our entire crew, I'm Tom Brenneman saying thanks so much for being with us. Keith Olbermann and Steve Lyons are standing by in Los Angeles. They go to game three, and this series looks like a dandy.